being closed almost 30 years, the former women's gymnasium is the home of the National Park Service's Center for Preservation, Technology, and Training. The women's gymnasium was constructed in 1923 and was designed by the architectural firm of Favreau and Lividay of New Orleans. The gym served as a classroom building and activity center for both male and female students. The women's physical education program took over the building when a new men's gym was completed in 1931. The first floor included offices, a classroom, dressing rooms, and a dance studio. Two stairways led to the second floor, which had a classroom, faculty offices, and the gymnasium. An indoor track was on the third level and was used for walking, running, roller skating, and served as a spectator balcony. The women's gymnasium was one of the centers of activity on campus. It was often the site for high school basketball and volleyball tournaments and gave students a chance to make extra money by officiating games. The gym also hosted student dances and festival activities. As the university grew, the facility could not accommodate all the students who took physical education classes. In 1969, the programs were moved to the newly constructed Women's Facility for Health and Physical Education, located on the east side of campus. For almost 30 years, the only use for the building was storage. Nevertheless, plans for renovation were always in the making, however, funding was never available. In 1982, the women's gym was the oldest building on the campus, and in 1984, it was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. A new use for the gym was developed after the National Center for Preservation, Technology and Training was placed at Northwestern in 1992. Rehabilitation of the structure began in 1997, but disaster nearly struck in November of that year when a fire destroyed the interior of the building. The facade, however, was saved. The fire delayed the project for more than two years. Work began in the year 2000 and was completed in mid-2001. The building was named Lee H. Nelson Hall in memory of a longtime employee of the National Park Service who was a pioneer in the field of historic preservation. The building contains laboratories, a seminar room, library, and several private and open area offices. Most people cannot think of the stately women's gymnasium without remembering the faculty member who had the biggest impact on students, Thelma Kaiser. Thelma Zelenka was born in Houma, Louisiana, January 28, 1898. Her parents were pioneer settlers in Homa, Dr. Rudolph Zelenka and Eva Marie Bozette Zelenka. Her family included one sister and three brothers. Thelma graduated from Terrebonne High School in 1915 and attended Louisiana Normal School, receiving her teacher's certificate in 1917. She taught several years in Louisiana public schools but returned to normal to earn her B.A. degree in English and History in 1922. She began teaching women's physical education during her senior year and served as class editor and faculty representative for the Potpourri. In 1923, Thelma organized the first Louisiana Athletic Association for Women. Thus was the first attempt to set standards and provide leadership for women's athletics. The WAA was organized at Normal in 1924, and the Constitution was adopted in 1925. In 1924, Thelma Zelenka married John S. Kaiser, a member of Normal's social science department. Their only child, Janet Ava Kaiser, was born in 1929. In 1929, Mrs. Kaiser started the first college play day to provide wholesome competition for women. It was during a time when athletics for women was not encouraged, so the play day offered an acceptable outlet for competition between colleges. The play day became a training ground for students majoring in health and physical education for women. High school play days were started in 1933 and were held annually for many years. Mrs. Kaiser, assisted by Dr. C.C. Stroud, established the first teacher training curriculum in health and physical education for women in Louisiana in 1930. 
Mrs. Kaiser authored a course of study for high school girls and women in health and physical education, which served as a curriculum guide for secondary teachers for many years. Mrs. Kaiser created and carried out a very modern program, including health and physiology, aquatics, gymnastics, team and individual sports, dance, Girl Scout training, and horseback riding. She worked diligently to change from the black bloomers to a more acceptable sports uniform. The famous white shorts were established by the mid-1930s. Mrs. Kaiser served as chair of the Louisiana Women's Rules Committee from 1931 to 1940. She organized the Women's Advisory Committee on Athletics for Girls in Louisiana in 1936. From 1928 to 1937, she served as the chair of the Louisiana Division of the National Athletic Federation. In 1937, she organized the first officials rating board in Louisiana, and from 1940 to 44, Mrs. Kaiser was Louisiana's chair of the National Section on Girls and Women's Sports of the Association for Health, Physical Education, and Recreation. In 1934, Kaiser co-founded the Louisiana Association for Health, Physical Education, and Recreation. She was elected as its first president, and she earned the honor of being the only president to be elected for two consecutive terms. Mrs. Kaiser retired in 1940 and served as wife of the head of the Department of Social Sciences until 1954, when she moved into the president's cottage as wife of President John S. Kaiser. Mrs. Kaiser remained active in many professional and civic organizations. She served as board member and president of the Association for the Preservation of Historic Natchitoches from 1954 to 1967. She founded the popular Fall Tour of Homes, which has continued to bring tourists to the Natchitoches area for nearly 50 years. Many honors have been bestowed upon Mrs. Kaiser since her retirement for contributions to Natchitoches and Louisiana. She died January 18, 1998, just 10 days before her 100th birthday. She lived a wonderful and productive life, and her pioneer efforts and influences will continue through many generations.